Hello and welcome back. In the last video we built this shift unit and we broke the add unit by uh, hardwiring one of its inputs to zero. Found a spare DuPont cable so we can fix that. The reason why I've got a option in the shift unit to output a zero is so it won't interfere with operations like add or anything going on on the other side of the ALU, i.e. a logic op. Or our shift via addition is working again now so that's good. And so what we don't have I've realized is the ability to tell the right hand input to output a zero. So we'll have to bypass that. The main thing I'd like to do today is build the instructions and the control logic necessary to actually use the shift unit. Looking back at the definition file for our architecture that feeds into the assembler I've written, we need to add some instructions. So this is going to be a single input instruction because it stores the result in the parameter and I need to give it an opcode. I'm going to leave some room for the dual input instructions to go ahead of it. So I'm going to start these at D. And we also want shift rights. Okay, now while we're here, let's um, let's write some test code. Get rid of that. Okay, so I'm just going to load a couple of constants into A and B, which are 255. So that's all eight bits set. And then let's just perform eight shifts to get rid of them. That should be nice and obvious if it's working. Okay, so running the assembler has updated the header file. So now we've got these eight new opcodes to implement. Okay, so we added the control lines for the shift into bits four and five, That's zero based. Let's add some uh, entries in the enum for that. Okay, now one thing we need to do is to add our pass-through into the addition control. Now, keen-eyed people realize that this enum entry has a value of zero, and so it's not actually going to have any direct effect at the moment. But it's actually pretty important that we, and good programming practice, to include it like this. Because implicitly add requires that the LHS perform a pass-through. So if at any time in the future I use this code or make a modification to the CPU that means that pass is no longer a zero, I won't have a whole bunch of places to go through and fix it up in the control generation. I just have to change my definition of the control lines up here. Okay, let's think about what we need. We can use our little compound definition, which is basically going to select A as the input. It's also going to set the bits required to write the result back to A. We obviously want to define for this shift left 
LHS op shift left. But we're also going to need to eventually define something that sets the right hand side as a zero. And we don't have that yet because we don't have that module. So what I'm going to do for now is cheat a little bit and set the right hand input to D. And so that should temporarily stand in for that. Let's save ourselves some time later. Let's create RHS op pass. And we haven't got any circuitry to add or any new control lines to specify this. But if we initialize it to D, then we just have to use this. So our code down here looks correct. No, not pass, zero we want. So now we can use this wherever we want and then when we've actually got that functionality, we can change these correctly. Okay, famous last words, but I think that's everything we need to do in here done. Rebuild the ROMs. At some point, we're going to have to build the circuitry necessary to make this reset on its own. Okay, so first we should have a load 255 into A, which we've got, now load 255 into B, which we've got, and then a series of shifts. So there's our first one there, should be dispatching. Shift up, shift down. Ah, oh, that's great. Let's reset and take a look at that again. So we've looked at lots of bits of code that use the constant load, which is horribly flawed because it has to emit this knot behind every constant load from the fetch unit into the pipeline because the memory bus is being consumed reading the immediate parameter for the constant. But now, every single time I clock, it performs an ALU operation. So we've got our two loads where we effectively issue an instruction every other clock. But once we're past that, these ALU op operations happen back to back each time I clock it. So that starts to show a little bit of the potential of this kind of architecture. So I'm quite pleased with that. And I want to do a little bit more testing. Did in fact allow lots of time for debugging this and it doesn't look like we're going to need it, so let's do a bit more testing. Now if you remember the first time we made that bouncing LED pattern, we did it this way with constant loads. So I've done one iteration of A going from the bottom bit to the top bit. But now let's do it using our ALU operations. OK, so let's repeat that as many times as we can.
Now I'm hoping this will be an effective demonstration of how much faster we've got just by improving our instruction set. So here's the LEDs going in the first direction using constant loads. And then we're going back the other way using the ALU op shift operations. Let's let that run. Okay, that's cool. I'm going to do one last change then. So we know we can do something very similar to a shift left, essentially identical to a shift left at the moment before we've got the flag handling in by doing an add and then we can bring B down one. These should all be one byte instructions. We've got 28 of those per cycle. Should be a load one, and a load one two eight into B, and now we should be doing our sequence of ALU ups. So there's the the new version of our little LED bouncing. So we are currently engaged in scalar execution which means we're executing one instruction for every clock. That's awesome. Now moving on from here there's a few different things I can think of to do. I hope to get the PCBs soon so we can create the additional GPRs. We need to build the right hand input but we're down to only one spare control line in pipeline stage one and no spare ones in two so we're gonna have to do some work to expand these at some point. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.